Hi, hey guys, welcome to another video for AP Lang here. Uh, we're going to talk about the introduction chapter to the book you've been checked out that you're gonna we're going to be working with for the rest of the semester. It's called They Say, I Say, The Moves That Matter in Academic Writing. And so this book is going to help us create our arguments, but also analyze some arguments. So the first thing we want to talk about is our goals for this video. So by the end of this video, you should be able to understand the rationale for this book, why we're using this book. Um, you should be able to begin to see the basic moves of academic writing, the stuff that you might see your teachers do that you wonder how they do it. We're going to kind of break that down into the basics. And then a big part of this book is templates to help you do your writing. So our goal is for you to start to see the connection between these basic moves and those templates. So first things first, why why are we so worried about argument, academic writing, this kind of stuff? So there's a philosopher named Kenneth Burke who writes about the philosophy of literature and he gives a really good analogy for why this stuff matters. So imagine you're at a party and you arrive late others are already there and they're engaged in really passionate discussion they're going back and forth and the, the discussion's so passionate they can't stop and catch you up so you listen kind of figure out what they're talking about then you get involved in the discussion you respond to someone they respond to you another person talks you respond to them they respond to each other so on and so forth time goes on you keep going through this conversation then you've got to go home you've got to leave so you leave this party but the discussion keeps going and it's just as passionate what Burke is talking about here is, is our lives this is what happens when we when we're entering academia when we're entering these arguments and conversations they've been happening before us they'll be happening after us but we can contribute to them. So we're coming into these conversations, these arguments, where other people have already been talking about them. We're kind of jumping in midstream. We need to be able to say something that helps that conversation move along. And that's what this book will help you start to do. Another important reason for the ability to argue well is we live in a post 9-11 world that is increasingly diverse and it's becoming more and more important that we have the ability to engage carefully thoughtfully and respectfully with those who may think differently from us and again this book and the basic moves it talks about helps us do that so the first thing this book talks about the reason it's called they say i say is when you entered into this conversation you always want to give the they say. Real world arguments come from being provoked. You're entering that party Burke talks about. If it weren't for other people, we'd have no reason to argue. We're constantly responding. We don't argue just to argue. We argue because we're annoyed, because we have a different opinion, because we disagree. So your ideas are constantly in response to some provoca provocation, to being provoked. So for your arguments to be strong, you have to establish this prov provocation. You must give what they say. Otherwise, your argument, no matter how logical, is going to have little effect. The entire time, your audience is going to be wondering why you're talking. So if you look at the two pictures here, the one on the left, your speaker, the characters in The Sopranos are very complex. He's not establishing what they say. He's just giving the I say. You have to say what you're responding to. So the audience doesn't really get why they're talking. You have to establish that why. The right side, some say that the Sopranos present characters of Italian-Americans. Now he's establishing what, what provoked him. Why is he talking? So as you establish what they say, you must ensure that they, the they you are talking about or responding to, represents some wider group that your audience can identify. Sometimes, you're going to have to spend some time properly identifying that group. For example, in this one, instead of saying some say that the Sopranos present characters, it would be better if that group was named. Um, but, 
if it's a commonly known argument or belief, it doesn't necessarily need to be specifically identified. And that's something we'll work on as we go through this book. You also have to be careful when you're creating this they say that you're not creating a straw man fallacy. So you can't create a group to respond to. You need to be responding to an actual real world provocation. So two examples here. One from MLK, letter from a Birmingham jail you're all familiar with. He says, you deplore the demonstrations taking place in Birmingham, but your statement, I'm sorry to say, fails to express a similar concern for the conditions that brought about the demonstrations. He's doing what this whole book is based around. He's responding to a provocation. They said this, I say this. That's what academic writing, that's what argument, that's what life when you're having those conversations is about. You're responding to provocations. The second example from Kath, Katha Pollitt. My daughter who goes to Stuyvesant High School only blocks from the World Trade Center thinks we should fly the American flag out our window. Definitely not, I say. Again, she's establishing they say, I say. My daughter says this, I say this and her daughter's representative of that larger group, a group who believes in the patriotism of flying the flag. So this group believes this, I believe this. That's what we're working on. If you think about soaps, the way to analyze an argument, the they say piece is the occasion. Why are you talking? Why are you responding? Why are you creating this argument? That's what you do when you give the they say. After you establish they say, you need to give the I say. It's a conversation. They say this, I say this. So you can see here, if you put it in kind of a two column thing, they say, some authors suggest video games rather than making gamers violent are actually making them smarter as a result of the complex demands of the games. I say, I know many people who play all the various violent video games, and none of them show a greater tendency toward violence than those friends who do not play such games. This is argument. It's a back and forth. It's that conversation at the party. They say this. I say this. They respond this. I respond that. Someone else responds. I respond to them. That's what you're doing in your writing, in your academic life, in your real world life. You're responding to provocations. So this book helps you do that by giving you templates, by breaking it down into these basic moves. So if you think of academic writing, first let's think about music, sports, anything you're good at, anything you've worked on, drawing, anything like that. They're all made up of these basic moves, these starting points, these things you have to do first before you get really good. The same's true of writing. If I'm throwing a baseball, I'm not thinking about aiming my shoulder, stepping with my foot, any of that stuff. I'm just picking up the ball and throwing. But when I was first learning to throw a baseball, I had to be taught that stuff. I had to practice it. I had to learn it. If I'm playing a song on a guitar, I have to learn the basics before I can do the more advanced stuff. The same is true of writing. The same is true of academic writing. So this book, helps you master those basic moves and it does that through templates. So this book introduces you to these basic moves by giving you some templates you can use. These templates give you a way to practice the basics so you can move beyond them. So the templates aren't your ending point, they're your starting point, they're the learning. Once you master them, you'll be able to do them without thinking about it. So critical thinking and writing often goes deeper than the templates, but they give you that foundation. You're going to go beyond them. Think of basketball now, another sport here. Think of the basic moves. When I'm beginning, yes, I'm dribbling. I learned to dribble. I can dribble. I don't dribble as well as a professional basketball player, but we're doing the same thing. We're doing the same move. These templates are those moves. So a professional writer is still doing the same things these templates do. They just do them in a more advanced fashion. So as we're using these templates, it's important to think about 
They're your starting point. They're to get you comfortable doing this academic writing, getting into this conversation. You're going to be able to move beyond them. So a summary here of the introduction. You're entering a conversation. Bert calls it that dinner party. You're showing up late. The conversation's been going on. You have to listen for a little bit. Then you get involved. Then you're going to leave and the conversation's going to keep going. But any argument, any conversation you enter into, you're being provoked. You're responding to a they say. It's important that you give that they say in your writing. You want to master the basics before you worry about the advanced stuff. These templates give you those basics. So we're going to be working through this textbook for the rest of the semester, and it's going to give you a bunch of templates and ways to do these basic moves. You want to master them. And then once you master the basics, you can move on to the more advanced stuff. Think of music, think of art, think of sports. You got to get good at the small stuff before you worry about the big stuff these templates give you the small stuff. They're going to give you that starting point. So what's next? If you haven't already done so, please read the introduction to They Say, I Say, and then also read chapter one. We're going to be working with chapter one this week, so make sure you get that read. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to talk to Mr. Smith, Miss Imamura, or myself. Thanks, guys.